How's it going folks? Time to post a clip that I've been wanting to do for a while. I promised a couple of people months ago that I was going to do, but here we go, finally getting around to doing it. It's a clip on the bulk chicken feeder we made up last year, or might have been the year before now, it's been a while. Uh, it basically involved using these flange fittings and a large drum, bigger than this, to make up a bulk chicken feeder to put a whole sack of grain in. Um, Big shout out actually before we go any further needs to go to Hamish Gale. Thank you very much, mate. Um, here's the guy I saw originally do this here on YouTube, Hamish Gale or Naughty Goat Farm. There'll be a link up there or somewhere. Um, he came up with this idea. I copied it, posted the clip, and yeah, it's everywhere on the internet. And you know, Hamish, you should be proud, mate. It's a fantastic idea. Saved us a lot in grain, so more than chuffed here. But anyway, um, yeah. This was the little fitting that um, I made the clip on and a lot of people around the world tried to find and they just couldn't. I know Aqua Barrel in the States, they sell it online and I think someone said a couple of department stores over there now stock them as well, but yeah, a bit hard to find in other places as well. What I've started to do is just use a straight elbow and I've came come up with a, a quick little nifty fix, um, cost you pretty much all nothing, um, to secure this in place in the barrel so it doesn't turn, doesn't twist and doesn't fall out. So to begin with, what you're going to need is a little 90 cent elbow, 90 cents, $2.50 bucket from a recycle center. This one's a four gallon or 15 litre jobby. Also going to need a little block of wood, four screws, just little screws, nothing fantastic. Um, a sharp knife, which I don't have on me, but I'm not going to be using today. Uh, a ruler and a pen, or if you don't have a sharp knife, a hole saw, this is what I'll be using today. So, pretty much well, bring you down and give you a bit of a closer look, I think. So to begin with, what I've done is taken one of these 90mm or 3 inch elbows and I've chopped off some of the bottom rim there, um, if you can make that out. What I've done is, this bottom rim is roughly 30mm or an inch and a quarter, roughly an inch and a quarter in depth, just that bit there, that's the bit that grabs onto the pipe. This is a female-female fitting by the way. And I've come down probably about just under 30 mil and cut away about, oh, probably about two thirds of the pipe work there. So if you can make that out. And that's the bit of scrap that's come off it. So what that's going to do is, that's going to sit in the, the floor. The grain will fall down just under that little gap there and into where the chickens can get it through this hole at the front here. So that's basically very easy to do. All you need is a hacksaw and a marker pen if you're like me and you're trying to get it as even as possible. To mark out the bucket is very easy. There's a bit of a lip on the base here, so I'll just draw a line. That's the actual floor, <laughs> roughly, a bit wonky. That's the floor on the inside of the bucket. Now all I really need to do is put that there, and I know that this part of the pipe pretty much all comes down to where I've cut it there, so I'm going to mark up 30 mil to allow for the um, to allow for this pipe sitting on the base, and from there, I'll just take the measurements off this. This one here has a diameter of, well, there you go, 94 millimeters. So just mark 47 millimeters there. Make sure it's roughly in the middle here. No, you need to come over this way a bit. So it's roughly in the middle there. I just need to zap a hole saw through there. So you can also cut these out by hand. And if I was to do that, all I would do is use that 30 mil mark there, draw around it with a marker pen, so now that line's drawn, all I need to do is just zip around it with a um, utility knife or a, a craft knife just to cut that out. If it was a thicker plastic, I'd probably suggest doing a pilot hole and then running around it with a jigsaw, mainly because it's going to take you forever with a little utility knife, unless you've got one of these little babies. So anyway, I'll stop yabbering on, find my drill, and put this through here. Just to let you know as well, running the drill backwards gives you a nice cleaner cut uh, when you're working with plastic. It doesn't tend to grab and rip the sides out, so just something I learned working with the aquaponics. So there we have a nice clean cut, not many burrs there at all actually. So this little bit of pipe work now pretty much all just gets slid in there like that. And push him down, and that's pretty much well what it's going to look like inside. But before I do that, what I will be doing is just zipping a couple of screws through this. What I like to do is put two screws in. So one at the top and one down the bottom. Uh, the reason for that is if you just put one screw in there, it's going to pivot on the timber. So I'm putting two in there just to keep it nice and firm. I'm also using stainless steel screws with this too. Not that there's much chance of moisture getting in here to corrode them. So there you go, little chock of wood is in place. 
Just need to feed this into the drum now. In like such. So it's just sitting in there nicely. So now all I need to do is put a couple of screws through the base of the feeder just into this block of wood to hold it in place. And I know the base actually sits just past the halfway mark in this. So what I'm going to do is drill a couple of pilot holes first. Just on the base here. Just again, just two so it doesn't swivel. And then pop this in place. And what I want to do is just make sure this is nice and level on the front. Um, just because chickens are fussy and they like a nice tidy coop. So more than anything. Now that's all nice and in place there. My fingers are out of the way and I can just zap two holes in there for the drill, for the screws. up a bit and there we have it a nice little neat feeder so that's all in there securely in place it's not going to move around at all might be a good idea just to run some silicon or caulking around this little gap all the way around the pipe if this is going to be in the chooks run um, out in the weather just stops any water that accumulates on the top seeping through and spoiling your grain or pellets or whatever you're feeding your chickens I'll just just pour some feed in here just to give you a bit of a look and there we go we've already got some feed come through the sides there and yeah chickens will be nice and happy so I'm more than happy with the way these guys are working I had this one here in the, the coop for about a week or so and it worked really well one of the problems we had with the original build of this is we had one of the chooks greedy mining for sunflower seeds and she was getting in there and scattering the seeds out putting it all over the floor Nowhere near as much as um, the old feeder, but still I thought we could improve it. So what I did was I got a little, um, uh, actually a peanut butter lid, chopped it in half and basically just pop riveted it in place. Um, another little fix that I've come up with since, looks a little bit more professional, is um, by putting a little ring of pipework in there and then getting an end cap from a stormwater drain and doing the same thing. Mind you, this would be closer to here for the chickens so they don't have to stretch their neck as much. Um, a lot simpler design is just simply putting a little piece of pipework in here. Um, the guys on the backyard chicken forum, a couple of them have done this. And because the chicken needs to stretch its neck a little bit further, it really doesn't have the opportunity to dig around and spread seed everywhere. So thank you very much, guys. Um, I don't know who posted that originally. I'd give you credit if I did. But it seems like a lot of the guys are using that. So that's a fantastic idea. It's a lot easier than fiddling around, chopping off end caps and also, you know, trying to pop rivet in <laughs> peanut butter lids. So that's a fantastic idea. Uh, one thing I have noticed though, um, along the same lines is, if you have this, this um, feeder up high enough off the ground, the chickens, same thing. They need to stretch their neck a bit, so they tend not to be able to dig around. They can still feed, but they can't dig around and mine for certain grains or pellets um, like they can if it's down low. So definitely think um, having the extra bit of pipe in there or some sort of a guard is a great idea if you've got different breeds. A lot of people um, have different breeds, chickens of different heights, so you can't you know, put something in too long in the front for your smaller breed. So it's just one of those things I suppose you've got to customize for yourself. Different chickens, different heights may um, require a different um, sort of front fitting here. So. Just to show you what I meant about the height difference before, I took a besser brick out, or a cinder block I think they're called elsewhere, out from underneath this feeder. It was sitting on two plus some bricks. And as you can see, I don't know, it's a bit glary this morning. Greedy's able to bring all the seed up to the front. The other girls do it too, but Greedy's notorious for it. She's brought it all up to the front and scattered some on the ground. This other feeder on the other side has been up here now for three days. And there, nothing. Not a skerrick. I can't, oh no, there's a little bit of corn down the bottom there. And as you can see, there's none brought up to the lip at all. Whereas this one here has feed all the way up to the lip here. So there you go. Um, I like the height. Uh, definitely helps. Probably would help if I put some sort of a um, rain guard over the top here. Like this one has on that side because it's a little bit more exposed. Um, that's as easy as just getting some off-cut pipe and just connecting it via pop rivet or glue. So... 
there you go just thought I'd give you a little bit of a look at that and while I'm here I'll collect the eggs now using fittings like these also work rather well in large drums like this what you can do is, I'm not going to do it with this drum, this drum's actually a water barrel, but you can cut two holes, or as many holes as you think will fit, just making sure that these guys don't overlap each other in the centre, that could cause a few hassles. As many holes, this one here I could probably put four in, um, holes through the side. You could either use a central piece of timber to secure them all to, or an individual small pieces of timber. I think a larger one would be better because of the uneven base in this style of barrel. But just to give you an idea, they work really well with bulk feeders. The one we've got down the back is actually a two port feeder. Um, started off as a one as I did in the original clip and now has two feeders in it. On the backyard chicken forum there's also loads of large multi feeders on display in the different threads, especially the feeder thread. Not only that, I had um, a lovely lady Debbie contact me and she made up an awesome looking bucket as well as the nipple feeders as well. Um, so I've put a link to her Pinterest below uh, just so you can check out her feeders and her um, bits and pieces that she's made up on her Pinterest site. So thank you very much Debbie, really appreciate that. So really, it's, it's up to your own imagination as to how far and how large you want to make these feeders. Um, for my sister's flock, she's got 12, 12 plus chickens. I'm going to be doing up a um, four port feeder. We've been thinking about getting some quail here as well for our backyard farm. And these little feeders are absolutely perfect for them as well. You just use a pipe with a smaller aperture. Uh, I think this guy is a 65 mil or an, a two and a half inch one so you can pretty much all scale it to the size of the bird you've got. There's also a couple of other great feeders I've come across online. Um, one's by Renaissance Marine and he uses scrap bits of pipe glued onto his. Check out his clip just up in the corner there. Um, he uses scrap bits of pipe glued on to hold it in place on the wall. Another one is um, Catalina down in Columbia I b believe. I think it's Paleo TV I may be incorrect but check out her clip up there as well. She's got a different design again um, she's got just the elbow coming through with a couple of cuts in the side. It goes through into a section of timber with a hole cut out. Anyway, check it out in her clip up there. Fantastic idea. Her and her hubby have come up with a great idea on that one. Um, that one involves no glue. All you need is a piece of timber, a saw, and your bucket, and your pipe. So, there you go. I think I've pretty much all covered everything there. Um, if not, like I said, there'll be links in the description below to those YouTube channels and also to the um, Backyard Chicken Forum. Thank you very much, guys. Wealth of knowledge there on all things chicken. I'm a bit of a lurker there. I don't really post much, but yeah, um, there's so much online to get through. I tend to lurk a lot of the time nowadays, so there you go. Um, I will leave it there. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, pop them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Oh. Thanks Hamish, catch you later. Just can't learn to share, can you girls?